I'm Ignacio Duram, I'm a medical oncologist and I work in Hospital Universitario Marques de Valdecilla in Santander in the north of Spain. Well, in my state-of-the-art lecture, um, I basically wanted to introduce the audience in the role of immunotherapy in the treatment of metastatic kidney cancer. So it's been a huge revolution uh, since we introduced immunotherapy as a treatment strategy in oncology and it's been particularly successful in some tumors like in kidney cancer. So basically in the 10 minutes that I had for my lecture, I went through the basics of the relationship between the immune system and kidney cancer. I went through the development of the antiangiogenics and the, immunotherape the immunotherapeutics and how very recently we have combined immunotherapy plus antiangiogenics or two types of immunotherapy with great success. And we review a little bit the different aspects in terms of activity, in terms of overall survival, in terms of quality of life, and activity in particular tumor variants like sarcomatoid renal cell cancer. Well, that, that's a great question. And first of all, let me tell you, quality of life is very relevant and is actually an endpoint that regulatory authorities are utilizing these days for drug approval when there is no uh, overall survival information. But the question is, the way we look at quality of life is probably not homogeneous. We're not doing this in a consistent manner. So there are a few things that need to be improved. And one of them is consistency across the different tests that we utilize to measure quality of life. The other one is the timing there are significant dropout of patients along the quality of life studies. And a critical point is also long-term data about quality of life. So my conclusion is there is still quite a space for improvement regarding quality of life studies in metastatic kidney cancer therapeutics. I mean, the truth is that the new research findings in terms of improving quality of life of patients treated with immunotherapy is a very wide uh, question. I, I think the key point is we are probably learning how to handle those uh, toxicities related to these new kind of treatments. Uh, there is much more knowledge about the timing of these adverse events. There is much more knowledge about how to manage patients who may present these adverse events. And there is much more knowledge about which patients could receive these treatments, even if they have some autoimmune diseases. I mean, to answer this question in a simple manner, I would say, I would say probably we need to consider most patients for an io based combo unless there is a formal medical contraindication. Having said that, it's true that when we look at analysis of different subgroups, those patients consider with good prognosis based on INDC uh, risk classification, their benefit may be less relevant. And actually, we heard data presented by Brian Rini at ASCO 2021, where he was presenting information about the 42-month rate uh, survival, and the numbers are almost identical between Axipembro and Sunitinib, 72% versus 73%. The same direction is the data published by Laurent Alviget about the combination of EP and nivolumab. When they look at the follow-up at four years, the survival curves are almost superimposed. So that's the group where we may have a little bit less impact of this um, IU-based combo. But I didn't want to leave out an special group of patients, and these are the patients with sarcomatoid differentiation. This is a group of patients that historically had almost no options, almost no activity with tyrosine kinase inhibitors, but now with the arrival of IO-based combos, the, the scenery has changed radically. So now with either IO-IO or IO-TKI, those patients may achieve responses in the range of 60%, complete responses that almost reach 18, 19% with EPNIVO and around 12% with the IO-TKI combos and the year, the one-year uh, survival rate 
is almost you know identical across the different studies and is in the range of 85 84 percent so very special population that now has an option that did not have until these recent studies were presented 